Hey everyone, this video is on AC induction motor. An AC induction motor, like all types of motors, is a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. As its name suggests, the device uses alternating current, which is abbreviated as AC, to produce mechanical energy. It has a different structure compared to DC motors, and its operation is based on two important concepts in electromagnetism, which are electromagnetic induction and the motor effect. The structure of an AC induction motor can be separated into two main parts, the stator and the rotor. The stator consists of electromagnets which produce magnetic fields, while the rotor, also referred to as a squirrel cage, is the component that will rotate when the electrical energy is transformed into mechanical energy. The stator consists of electromagnets connected to AC power supply. A typical AC induction motor consists of three pairs of electromagnets. These motors are often called three-phase induction motors. Recall that an alternating current changes in magnitude and direction periodically and they flow through these electromagnets at different times such that they produce a rotating magnetic field. This graph shows how the current, magnitude and direction change in each pair or phase of electromagnet of induction motor. The magnitude of magnetic field is proportional to the magnitude of current. When the magnitude of current increases, so does the magnitude of the magnetic field. When three pairs of electromagnets are connected to three different phases of AC, that is alternating current, a rotating magnetic field is produced. This is sometimes abbreviated as RMF. When a conductive rotor is placed inside a rotating magnetic field, as shown here, it experiences changes in magnetic flux. The speed at which the magnetic field is rotating is referred to as the synchronous speed. When a rotor experiences the change in magnetic flux, according to Faraday's law of induction, an EMF, that is an electromotive force, will be induced in the rotor. This EMF will then produce current, and when we have current going through the rotor, we'll have a current carrying conductor inside a magnetic field. There will be a force acting on the rotor, and this force will produce torque and therefore allowing the rotor to rotate. The rotor of an AC induction motor is called a squirrel cage. It consists of two metallic rings connected by multiple metal rods. These metal rods are called rotor bars. When the squirrel cage is placed inside the stator of the induction motor, each rotor bar in the cage will experience a change in magnetic flux due to the rotating magnetic field that we spoke about earlier. According to Faraday's law, this change in flux will cause an EMF to be induced in the rotor, that is the squirrel cage, and the EMF will produce current in each of the rotor bars. When we have current carrying conductor, that is a rotor bar, inside a magnetic field, there will be a force produced on each of the bars, and these force will then together produce torque, allowing the squirrel cage to rotate. The rotational speed of the squirrel cage depends on the synchronous speed, that is the speed at which the magnetic field is rotating. However, it is important to understand that the rotational speed of the rotor must always be slower than the synchronous speed. This is because if the rotational speed is equal to the synchronous speed, then the rotor bars in the squirrel cage wouldn't experience any changes in flux. And if there's no changes in magnetic flux, there will be no EMF induced. When there's no EMF induced, there's no current. And when there's no current, there is no force acting on the squirrel cage. So in order to have induced EMF causing a force to be present, the rotational speed of the rotor, that is a squirrel cage, must always be less than the synchronous speed or the rotational speed of the magnetic field. Like all motors, the magnitude of torque of the motor depends on the magnitude of force acting on the rotor. In this case, this is a squirrel cage. The force depends on the magnitude of current and therefore the induced EMF according to Faraday's law. By Faraday's law, we know that the magnitude of EMF is proportional to the rate of flux change. 
This means we can increase the EMF and therefore the torque of an induction motor by simply increasing the rate at which the flux is changing. This is actually a benefit of an induction motor. However, at the same time, this is also a limitation or a disadvantage of induction motor because for all induction motors, the rate of flux change is always quite small when the motor is at its startup phase. If the rate of flux change is small, then you will have a smaller magnitude of induced EMF, hence current, and that will in turn give you a small starting torque. The advantages of AC induction motors are as follows. Since the squirrel cage is the only component that is connected to the axle, you will find that there are no commutators and brushes inside an induction motor. An induction motor also uses electromagnets rather than permanent magnets. However, despite the difference in components, energy, that is electrical energy, is still lost as heat as the current is flowing through the rotor bars of the squirrel cage. As we spoke about earlier, the angular speed of the rotor can be easily controlled by the AC frequency, that is the frequency at which the current is switching its direction. The disadvantage of AC induction motor include a low starting torque. Remember the torque of AC induction motor depends on the rate of flux change. In the beginning phases of an AC induction motor when it's being first turned on, the rate at which the flux is changing is always relatively small, hence a low starting torque. Although the rotational speed can be easily changed by changing the frequency of AC power supply, this is also quite limited as the frequency of AC has its own limits. This limit on rotational speed results in a limited application of AC induction motors. This is why some devices prefer to use AC induction motors while the other ones prefer to use DC motors. You can argue that AC induction motors require a complex setup as you need at least three phases of electromagnets to make the induction motor work, as opposed to only one pair of permanent magnets in conventional DC motors. The operation of an AC induction motor can be easily demonstrated and modeled in a classroom. When a permanent magnet is made to rotate above a metal disc using an electric drill, the metal disc will experience changes in magnetic flux due to a rotating magnetic field, RMF. This is very similar to what the squirrel cage experiences in an induction motor. And by Faraday's law, this change in flux will induce EMF and therefore produce eddy currents, that is circular currents, inside the metal disc. When the eddy currents flow through the metal disc inside a magnetic field, this will produce the motor effect, where the force will act on the disc causing it to rotate in the same direction as the rotating magnet on the drill. When the rotational speed of the permanent magnet is increased by adjusting the setting of the electric drill, the rotational speed of the disc also increases. Let's compare an AC induction motor with a conventional DC motor. Similarities wise, both motors will transform electrical energy to mechanical energy, which is the main form of energy transformation that occurs in motors. Both types of motors will utilize the motor effect, that is, when you have a current carrying conductor inside the magnetic field, a force will be produced on the conductor. In both motors, we have electrical energy being partially transformed into unwanted heat, and this is what lowers the efficiency of the motor. Of course, an obvious difference between the two motors is that they have different power sources. An AC induction motor utilizes an alternating current, whereas a DC motor uses a direct current. The current in a DC motor originates from a battery, while the current in an AC induction motor is induced due to the EMF, which is in turn caused by the change in magnetic flux according to Faraday's law. Structurally speaking, an AC induction motor does not require any type of commutators and brushes, whereas in a DC motor, we can see that there are a pair of brushes and a pair of split ring commutators. A DC motor has also got a greater starting torque as the current passing through the coil is already at its maximum value as supplied by the battery. And the AC induction motor has a low starting torque because the magnitude of torque depends on the rate at which the flux is changing. And this is usually the lowest during the startup phase of the induction motor. 
this concludes the video on AC induction motors.